Hey everybody, Steve here, and today I am doing what I always do on this channel, which is diving into a project that I am completely and utterly unqualified to do. But I'm going to do it anyway. For those of you who have been around for a while, you know that this whole channel is about grabbing the bull by the horns and just going for it. Most of the stuff that I do in my videos I've never done before, but if you end up watching the videos, chances are I was successful. And I'm here to encourage you to grab the bull by the horns, dive into projects that you feel completely uncomfortable doing because we live in a world with YouTube and Google and there really isn't anything that we can't accomplish. So today, it's the video editing computer. This is my 2014 state-of-the-art i7. What are the specs on this thing? It's an Intel i7-5930 6-core processor running 3.5 gigahertz, which I've overclocked to 4.5, and it's been running stable for years. It's really been a mainstay. Uh, but 2014, eh, it's starting to give me problems. I'm kicking out more video than ever nowadays, and I am just sick and tired of it crashing because I'm taxing it too much. All right, so this baby's going to get a little upgrade from the uh, six-core processor. Let's see what we're going to do. For the first time in my life, I'm not going Intel. First time ever. I'm going with AMD. I've been running my mining rigs for three years now with all AMD graphics cards, and I've never had a failure. So my confidence in AMD is pretty high, and this baby right here has gotten a lot of really, really good reviews. Check this out. This is an AMD Ryzen, if that's how you pronounce it. AMD Ryzen Threadripper 24 core. It's got 48 threads right here. That's the processor that I'm going to be going to. Uh, let's see here. 3.0 gigahertz base, 4.2 gigahertz max boost. In order to incorporate that into my old box, I need to get a new motherboard. This is the motherboard right here. This is an X399 gaming motherboard. It's got eight DIMMs. And it's good up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4-3600 RAM. Pretty sweet. Oh, and while we're talking about RAM, never before in my life have I had this much RAM. 128 gigs of DDR4. I think I went with 3200 because that was a recommendation. Four times what I'm running right now. Very excited about this. And to keep that chip cool, this is Thermaltake Water 3360. All right, let's get started. This is going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully a massive, massive improvement to uh, uh, the channel and my ability to kick out videos. Here we go. All right, so I am going to start off here by saying that I am not an experienced bench tester. I just figure if I run a few tests with the uh, old processor and the new processor and run in the exact same way, we'll be able to decipher some sort of data out of that. So what you're looking at right now is the old one. Uh, this is the uh, i7-5930. It is a 3.5 gig processor but it's been overclocked to 4.4 as you can see over here I've got a couple pieces of software running I've got CPU Z running and I've got CPU hardware monitor running so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over and do some bench tests but we've got to take into consideration that I've got my screen recording software running so some of these numbers are gonna suffer just a little bit um, let's go ahead and run a bench test uh, we're currently on the old system being overclocked to 4.4 let's see what happens now my plan here is I'm going to run all of these tests with the uh, screen recording software running uh, so that at least we're comparing apples to apples. 
All right, so it has come in at 467.3 and 3501. Now I will tell you, I, I just ran this without the screen capture software on and the processor speed was uh, 3604 and the this processor was 469. So a little bit of detriment because of the screen recording software, but I think we're getting some numbers here. All right, and if I go and I hit stress CPU uh, and we look over here, you can see that the clock speed for all six cores is maxed out of 4.4 and you can see that the processors are all at 100%. All right, then another test that I want to run is Cinebench. All right, I'm going to leave this up here for the sole purpose of us remembering that we're running this test with the uh, screen recording capture uh, software on and let's go ahead and run. All right, there's my score. I came in uh, just underneath. Let's see, here's 2788. Came in just below the 2814, which is, I guess, the benchmark for um, my processor. So yeah, that is what it is. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut everything down and dial this thing back to the defaults. All right, so this is the old computer. This is the Intel Core i7-5930 running at its stock CPU level, which is 3.5. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, go into and do a bench test. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, 379 and a 2732. All right, so we'll check these numbers against the overclock speed. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run a um, Cinebench test, and we'll see how this goes. Looking at the numbers here, got a score of 2148, which is number 9 on the list, and it looks like the corresponding identical system is all the way back at number 6. All right, so one test that we've left out is what I consider the most important test, and that is the reason why I decided to get a new processor in the first place, which was how long it took Premiere Pro to load. So when this baby gets to 30, I'm going to go ahead and click on Premiere Pro, and let's see how long this takes. All media loaded. All right, so a few seconds shy of 4.30, which would have been four minutes exactly. So we're going to do this exact same test with the exact same file with the new processor once we get there. I think that's it for all the tests on the Intel. Um, go ahead and put this new computer together and run all these tests again on the new processor. and Hopefully we'll get better results. All right, here we are. We are now looking at the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 24 core 48 thread processor. And as you can see, here's all the voltages. And if we pan down some, you can see the temperatures and the clock speeds. All right, so this is at the stock clock speed, which is uh, three gigahertz. And let's go ahead and bench this thing. All right, so obviously the multi-thread score is substantially higher. The processor score is right. I forget what the other number was, but here we are at 346. I'll have to go ahead and flash up the other score. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and run Cinebench and see the comparison uh, between Cinebench here and Cinebench on the other processor. And there's our score, 7968. All right, when we get 10 seconds, I'm going to go ahead and click on Premiere Pro and see how long it takes to load. Oh. And done. So minute and six or minute and five, whatever that was. So, uh, wow. So here is the Intel number, and here is the Threadripper number. 
All right, so let's overclock this thing and see what we can squeeze out of it. Okay, so the bench test at 3.675 and 1.125 on the voltage is 13.085 and 4.23. All right, I'm gonna refrain from making this any more of a long drawn out uh, overclocking video and I'm gonna go straight to the test that I wanted to do, which my Premiere Pro test, so at 10, I'm clicking. And I'm watching for all media to load right here. Where is it? All media loaded. 33 seconds. That was 23 seconds. 23 seconds. Wow. I don't really know how to do this math, but uh, from 23 seconds to 240 seconds is, is a 943% increase. What about uh, 240 down to 23? I don't really know how this math works, but I'll just do it both ways. 90% decrease. All right, so whatever it is, it is what it is. All right, so in this test, we're going to render a half hour uh, video clip uh, at two minutes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the render button, and let's do this. All right, so 4030 uh, minus the two minutes that we started with is gonna leave us with 3830. Now we're gonna run the same test with the AMD Threadripper and see what the variation is. This is the Threadripper and I'm going to be using the exact same uh, criteria for uh, rendering on both computers. All right, and when it gets to 130, I'm gonna go ahead and hit export and we'll see how long this thing takes to render on both machines. All right, so looking at the results, our uh, Pentium chip came in at a 38 and a half minute render, and our Threadripper came in at uh, 3020. So a uh, differentiation of about eight minutes and 10 seconds, if my math is correct. Pretty significant as it pertains to um, percentage. So I think between these two and all the other tests that we did, I'm quite content with uh, the way the Threadripper is behaving. And in an effort to continue uh, increasing the speed, I'm going to be ditching my old fashioned hard drives for solid state drives. And I'll do some more tests and make another video on that as well. So anyhow, um, I'm looking forward to making more videos and spending less time in the editing room. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that little bell so that you get notifications as soon as the new videos come out because I know you want to. Anyhow, I'm Steve, signing off till the next video. Thanks for watching.